Hi guys, it is a gloomy, yuck, rainy, windy, depressing, foggy, just a yuck day here in the end times in paradise in this little, uh, my latest little bivouac out in the swamp outside of Cedar Key, Florida here on this gloomy Friday, January 12th. 2018. So, uh, Friday is the day I bring you my two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant, uh, which I'll be bringing you in a minute. But before I <coughs> dive into that, if I can survive this coughing Hillary Clinton fit, uh, I want to dive into my Humpty Dumpty Tribe mailbox here on uh, this morning to look at some of the 77 comments I have received from Alert Tribes members commenting on my depressed collapsitarian doomsday Luddite whine, not a rant, my whine yesterday, uh, which must have must have hit a nerve with a few people, so we're gonna we're gonna check in with various people, and I must say I'm somewhat thrilled to announce I am on the internet out here. I'm on about a Peruvian Amazon level of internet here in the end times, but I guess better than nothing at all. We're gonna start out with our old buddy David Henderson, who is confused about the difference between a whine and a rant. I have no idea why I found this rant so amusing. It's funny hearing the contrast between Hambone rant about little everyday problems we all go through while also whining about one of the biggest existential threats facing our species and the planet. And this was my comment back to David. You are confusing ranting and whining, amigo. You have the terms reversed. I'm not sure why it is so hard for people to understand the difference between a whine and a rant. <clears throat> but anyway, at any rate, <coughs> the point of this whine was to illustrate that all of this brain-eating shit that every one of us eat on this planet every day is one of the main existential threats facing this planet as it is what keeps our head so full of bullshit up past our eyeballs that we cannot see <clears throat> the oncoming tsunami of shit getting ready to knock our asses off the planet. My whines really do have a point, though I don't expect 99% of folks listening to them to understand what the fucking point is all about. But one person who understands exactly what the point of my whines is about is good old brother Mark from out there in West Bumblefuck, New Mexico. And uh, this is Brother Bart leading off with his own quote from Rob Schneider. Quote, Life is a series of disappointments punctuated by a few brief moments of pleasure. Um, and then uh, Mark takes over from Rob. Great whine. Thanks, amigo. You are the Garrison Keeler of the depressed collapsitarian genre. Well, I think Garrison Keeler has grabbed a lot more tits and ass in his life than I have in mine, but that's another whine, is the lack of tits and ass to grab here in the, uh, in the end times. Anyway, moving along. <clears throat> What's going on out in West Bumblefuck, New Mexico? 2018 started out in West Bumblefuck a little better, other than the fact that rain and snowfall are 95% below normal. 
<clears throat> the neighbor's wife is back in the mental institution. After she left my place, she walked barefoot across 40 acres of corn stubble and shot my other neighbor's milk cow. They found her throwing rocks at his tractor, incoherently muttering something about how it never snows on Sunday anymore, and other things. It's too bad about her. She was nice and pretty, too. She went around the neighborhood regularly, giving away fresh eggs, homemade bread, and jam. I wonder what made her go over the edge that we're all walking close to. A little something goes wrong in the brain chemistry, and that's it. She was right about no snow on Sunday, however. It doesn't snow on any other day either. The neighbor's pear tree was in full bloom in October, roses blooming in December, butterflies in January. Anyway, the neighbors are helping to rebuild the house Thank God for country life, and planting will begin soon. I hope to have at least one good year beneath blue skies before collapse. The good news is that the neighbor's milk cow is recovering nicely. Keep, please keep Sancho away from the water. Alligators are lightning fast as you know. And now this next comment picking up on uh, several of you commenting about uh, about keeping Sancho away from the alligators and this is good old Andy from Zombie Island. I'm gonna revisit this comment on Sunday, this little, the, the fuller context of the con uh, of, of this comment, but uh, but uh, I'm just going <clears throat> to read a little bit of it. Don't take this wrong, the wrong way, Hambone, but I hope Sancho gets consumed by a giant predator. Uh, I know you like dogs, Hambone, but they are horrible, yappy, artificial child substitute parasites for emotionally weak, dependent people, a necessary add-on consumer accessory. And like children, they also replace, but are usually in addition to, a massive burden on the world. <clears throat> I'm probably going to get flamed for saying your little innocent dog should get killed by an alligator, but it's not as if the world is short of small dogs and brimming with alligators. Uh, well, Florida is sure as hell brimming with alligators, Andy. Uh, you ought to come down here. Uh, but anyway, I'll have the rest of this. So this was Sancho Ponza's comment to Andy. <clears throat> Sancho says he hopes your limey ass gets run over by a double-decker lorry full of clueless moron tourists on their way to Buckingham Palace while you are pedaling your bike to the vegan grocery store. And from England to Australia, where we're going to check in with my old buddy, uh, and down there, if he's not, uh, if he has not been incinerated in a wildfire, good old Om Calgano. And Om, could you please email me at Humpty Dumpty Tribe at gmail.com because I want to set you up as one of my uh, voices from the Doomosphere interviews. So please email me so we can do that. So this is Om Calgano's comment on my whine <coughs> yesterday. A, a big part of my whine was whining about how completely enslaved I am to all of this digital <coughs> planet-eating crap. Digital enslavement via smartphone handcuffs is my preferred choice 
of internalizing the Mad Hatter Tea Party logic of the dominant culture. I love nothing more than reaching over to my glowing gadget made out of broken souls, rare earths, and the bones of a dying planet and self-indoctrinating with the topsy-turvy narrative of default reality every morning. <clears throat> While the physical world spins over the carrying capacity cliff with literally every life support system dying before our very eyes, I like to distract myself with an artificial culture presented and served to me in the form of a tapestry of digital hallucinations. Your digital enslavement ain't got shit on my electronic handcuffs, hambone, and don't you forget it, amigo. I like to play the game of pretending that I have a discerning intellect with a sophisticated grasp on reality and a propensity to pursue highbrow literature. But really, I am just another hungry monkey playing with my chimp biscuit in the digital sandbox of things while the world burns around me. Game of Fruit Ninja? Anyone? Game of Fruit Ninja. Thank you very much, Brother Alm, or Alm, uh, for explaining your smartphone addiction, which at least is one addiction that I don't have. So, uh, with all of that said, from our Alert Tribes members, I am now going to move along to my regularly scheduled Friday programming, my ecological meltdown roundup rant, where I'm simply, now that I have a, a thin umbilicus uh, to the world wide web uh, from here in the middle of nowhere, uh, I will open up my email box to bring you more evidence of how this planet is heading directly into a brick wall at 67,000 miles an hour. Bye, guys. Look at this gloomy day. Gloomy day in the end times. Smoke them if you got them, and you know why.